boy, you caught me on an exciting night tonight. We're gonna try out my. Uh, I don't. I even have. I don't have even read the instructions all the way. I'm gonna try out my new flour mill thingy, my Bob. <laughs> this is. It's, it's kind of scary. It's too. I don't like big things like this. <laughs> we're gonna see how this goes. Anyway, tonight we're gonna be making ginger flour and ginger clay. But first you need the ginger flour to make the ginger clay. So what, you, what you're gonna need, if you don't have a mill like this, it's a KitchenAid flour mill, you don't need it. I'm just trying something new. Um, you do need a, a food processor. I used to use a blender. So it, I used to use a food processor, then a blender, then a little sifty thing like this. I'm sure there's a real word for this, but I don't know it. Anyway, so uh, I'm nervous, really nervous. I just got this thing out of plastic. Let's just get started and see how this goes. I know how to do the first part, okay? All right, so this is all my leftover gingerbread from when I made my bricks. So it's kind of funny looking. I'm going to try to crash it out just a little bit. And it's thick because I couldn't really, I try not to put really thick pieces in, but it's kind of hard not to when they're leftovers. Now, when I need ginger flour, but I don't have any leftovers, I actually make gingerbread and I roll them into thin sheets. And then I, you know, cut them zigzag and it's great. You know, you just throw it in. Um, when they cool, you just throw it in and grind it up. Um, or, 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 <laughs> this is why I have dogs around me. They pick up the gingerbread off the floor. Um, or you can buy really cheap, like, ginger snaps or um, old, you know, like, gingerbread houses, you know, from the store, like, when they're on sale for a buck or something after the season's over. Keep those and grind those up if you want to. Okay. So I don't want to make this very heavy. I, I don't have that much in here. You don't want to fill it to the, you definitely don't want to fill it to the top. It's too much. Um, okay, let's, let's get it in here. So once I got enough in there, I grab on really well and I start grinding. to the flour mill here for a second or two. 
or three. is a mess. Alrighty then. Move this over a bit. Alright, so this is the flour mill. <laughs> um, I'm serious. I really don't know what I'm doing here. So I'm fill the hopper with grain. Okay, so you pour it in. This is not going to be cool. This is, does, not, does not feel right at all. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm gullible. Let's see what happens. Um, okay, I'm going to hang on to this real quick because I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, this isn't bad. It's not good. We place the grain, the hopper, desired amounts, and then... It doesn't seem to want to go though. <laughs> you gotta keep hitting it or something? Oh yeah, put more of them. <laughs> okay, hold on. It doesn't seem to want to get down in there. I wonder if I had to push it or something. This is not safe. Don't do this at home. Make sure it's shut off before you start sticking your fingers and stuff. I'm sure more of you, most of you guys are more brilliant than I am, but just, <laughs> I think my blender works faster than this, but it's going now, do you see it? I don't know if you see it, it's going, we're good, I have this at a, um, it's like, from the finest, I have it from two, two over from that. Okay, now that I've got my old trusty KitchenAid uh, blender, <laughs> it's not a very fancy one at all either. It's not expensive, um, yeah, but it does the job. <laughs> so what I do is I take the crumbs that I put through the food processor and I usually put in one or two cups. I kind of eyeball it. Put the lid on it and then hit liquefy. Like it's kind of lava-like, 
almost in the blender and um, it, I guess you just have to try it out. I, I, I put it on liquefy at least it's probably just a minute. So now I have this is my last bit and I have excess little rocks there so I'm just gonna I'll, I'll, I'll give those a toss pretty soon. You can tell I've been watching British TV. Give it a toss. Okay, so this is what what I what's the end product, the ginger flower. This is what it looks like. It feels like sand. It's soft, but it's got a little grit to it, not a lot of grit at all. It's very fine. That's what you want. Now, my this one is pretty light because I the the um the gingerbread that I was using had uh, titanium dioxide in it. Um, now you can get darker gingerbreads too. It just depends on how long you bake them for. Uh, but this is what I, I wanted. Okay, now now that I've made a complete mess of the kitchen, I'm not done yet. Now it's time to make the ginger clay. But first, we got to bag this puppy up. You want to protect your ginger flour. What I suggest, uh, because this does quite, create quite a mess and there's a lot of noise involved. And if you have kids or dogs that aren't used to it, my dogs come running when they hear it because they know there's gonna be gingerbread on the floor. <laughs> but if you, if it, it does, it, you can, um, and I do suggest you make this ahead of time. So you just, before you just start your project, you know you're gonna use ginger clay. You just, um, just start making sheets and sheets of gingerbread. Uh, I would say, maybe two, start off with two batches of gingerbread and that's so I'll probably make around eight sheets of gingerbread and then just grind it all up, put it in baggies and then you'll have it. Okay, we have our ginger flour bagged. Let's start with our ginger clay. What you're going to need are the following ingredients. Your two cups of ginger flour, one tablespoon of Tylose powder and one tablespoon of gum arabic, the powdered, and a half a cup minus a tablespoon or two of water. All right, let's make some ginger clay. So I have two cups of ginger flour already in my bowl. Okay. What you're going to need is one tablespoon of gum arabic. This is the powdered stuff. Okay, you can buy that on Amazon. One tablespoon of Tylose powder or gum gum tex. This is a Wilton version, but I um, but there's a generic version out there which I talked about earlier and then I mix it I, I kind of incorporate it then I add a half a cup of water minus two tablespoons so whatever that is so it's not it's not all the way to the top I just fill it up to the top and then take out two tablespoons of water and then then I mix it to start off with because it really feels gross. <laughs> I guess you could stick your hands in it to begin with, but no. <laughs> I don't I don't want to. <laughs> so I get it to where it's like almost all the way, it looks like it's kind of grabbed all the crumbs. I get ew, it's gross. <laughs> it doesn't feel gross once you get it all incorporated. Don't let me scare you off. Then, once I get it incorporated, pretty much, I get, get my hands dirty. I, I uh, mix it until everything's incorporated and I can feel no more grittiness. If that's, that's a word, grittiness? I, it doesn't feel gritty anymore. So what I do is I, I get it, I get everything to where it can come out of the bowl and make sure that you soak your bowls immediately. If not, you're going to have some cement on your hands, which I probably will because it's going to take me a little bit to do this. So now, 
I'm gr I'm just kneading this. Now, if you can see, hold on, it's got some grit to it. You can feel the grit, and you can see it. All I'm doing is kneading it. Now, if you're in dry conditions and um, you feel like you need more water, just put a tablespoon in. It will, I don't think it'll hurt anything. But don't, um, you'll have a big mess if you just try to do a whole bunch of water all at once. Hmm, this feels like I could have used a, a, one more tablespoon of water, but I think it'll work for what I'm going to be using it for. Now, you can color your ginger clay at this point, or you could color it, um, you can color the water that you put in it. Um, it's up to you. I like to, I do it like this, um, I just, I make it plain. Um, when I'm making, some, I need different colors, so I can split this in half and then color, you know, make two colors or three colors or whatever. Once, once I have it kneaded, it's pretty good. I will put it in a, make sure you keep it in a Ziploc bag at all times because it will dry out. Okay, I've colored my ginger clay green. Sometimes it darkens up over time. You know, when I, when I first, from the time I first make it until, um, it, until, you know, like a day later, it, it gets maybe, it can get a little darker. Because I had to put so much green in it to make it work, the ginger clay is kind of too soft to put on um, our gingerbread. What I do is I extrude the pieces I need. Um, so tomorrow, when it's when it's a little firmer, I can just put it on and not have to worry about the gingerbread shrinking because it will shrink. Um, it's not a big deal if it does shrink on you. You can just fill in the gaps with. Um, really light like um, some ginger clay and it you came tell it's it's it ever shrunk the front has a lot of straight lines to it so I want to make sure it's easier to make the straight lines um, it, it's easier to make the straight lines on the ginger clay on a mat let them dry and then put them on because when you put them on it usually um, it tends to wiggle a little bit and you can see every little wiggle. So with that said, let's get started. Um, I'm just going to show you how to do some of these because <laughs> it's kind of boring watching me extrude things, I know. But I wanted to show you what, how, we're, how I'm doing it so when you, when you uh, see it put on. So what I'm doing is I'm making the paneling for the front of the cafe. I'm extruding uh, strips right up here. See how really loose it is? Yeah. pretty pretty easy you just you just extrude the ribbon take it off and then you're going to just 
lay it down and then I just push it I push it with my little square thing here then I cut and cut and that's pretty much all there is to it <laughs> and I'm going to make um, maybe oh, about six or seven of these big strips and then I'm going to go and make a ton of these little squares uh, for for the uh, Wayne that this is for the Wayne's coating on the bottom of extruding and I probably still have some more to go but fortunately is past my bedtime I do have a job so next time I'm going to be showing you how to make Tylos glue and we are going to be putting on our ginger clay paneling that we've worked so hard to extrude tonight so until then